One of my sisters and I's favorite childhood books was Dr. Seuss's The Foot Book. Our mom would read it to us with an array of goofy voices, a different one each time, and we thought it was just hilarious, and early reading was made very enjoyable thanks to her. Back then, I liked to dig my head into picture books and pop-up books, and while they were very simple reads, I wasn't afraid to pick up a book. There was a lot of potential to improve my reading skills until around second grade when I was introduced to one of the worst things I've ever had the misfortune of experiencing, accelerated reader. Accelerated reading forced kids to take quizzes and tests for the purpose of reading comprehension, and reading became less about enjoying a book for the sake of reading and more about testing your knowledge on specific facts about the book. The goal of AR was a little too ambitious in my opinion. After reading a book, I never thought to myself, hey, I'd really love to take a test right now. And I get now that it was for reading comprehension, but back then, if I really enjoyed reading a specific book, I would more likely than not read it over again and catch certain parts that I missed in the first read, and would have a better understanding of the material in the second or third time around. For a kid like me, teaching reading comprehension would have been better off as a reward system, but AR used great incentives to strike fear into my heart. As a matter of fact, I always thought it to be more of a punishment system than a reward system, so I personally never enjoyed it. Fortunately, thanks to the parts of my school's education system that had nothing to do with Accelerated Reader, my literacy never took a setback. Throughout my life, I could read English pretty well. At least, pretty well when you consider how poorly I wrote back then. When I was introduced to writing, I immediately saw the parallels between reading and writing. What I read was simply what somebody else wrote down. A problem arose when I also drew parallels between speaking and writing. Because I used to think of writing as just speaking with a pen, I wrote the way I spoke. This might have been because I liked when people read out loud for me, but I didn't quite understand that writing had a very different structure from speaking. I was also confused by this concept when I considered that vernacular could be used in literature in quotation marks or when a character was speaking. So when I was in the third grade, I wasn't very good at writing, and I was quickly losing interest in reading. Then the scholastic book fairs came along. They were held at my school every year, and I would always go to get trivial toys while my mom would actually try to get me books from the fair and would persuade me to read a real book. But when you see a book that lets you play mini golf on it, you just have to buy it. My mom desperately tried to get me to read again, but it just never really worked. About five years went by and I never improved my reading or writing skills like my classmates did. Then, my freshman year of high school, I had a great English teacher who actually taught my class how to write like coherent writers did. It was a miracle. As a matter of fact, I was able to write a six-page research paper on artificial intelligence in the military, and for whatever a 98 on the paper is worth, I'd say it was a positive milestone in my history of writing. Another aspect of this paper that made it memorable and important to me was that I was able to interview my half-brother who serves in the military. That is, if you call Facebook messaging an interview. Nonetheless, it was nice to hear from him, and he gave me lots of information for my paper, which I found to be very interesting. Mix talking to my half-brother with playing Call of Duty Black Ops, and you've got a kid who's interested in military technology and military history. Not even a year later, my stepdad recommended a book by the name of Rogue Warrior by Richard Marchenko. Never heard of the author, which is quite unfortunate considering that he founded SEAL Team 6. And if that didn't tell me that he ate nails for breakfast every morning, his book most certainly did. Reading Demo Dick Marchenko's action-packed biography inspired me to read for enjoyment as I used to as a very young child. Since then, I've read several books, including, but not limited to, Into Thin Air, Physics of the Future, and most recently, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And though I've gone through some mild adversity pertaining to reading and writing in my life, I'm happy to say that I've improved those skills to a modest level. I mean, I wrote down everything I just said and read it over multiple times to make sure I sounded coherent. But beyond extremely convenient applications of those skills, I will still try to use them for recreational purposes to keep reading and writing two strong hobbies in my life.